also is better. So before you even, we even do like a traditional prone P to A thrust, I just want to talk about if we can't be specific, we don't need to be tied to these rules like, oh, do unilateral P to A on the, on the right side to improve trunk rotation to the left. And if I wanted to improve trunk rotation to the right, I would do a unilateral P to A on the left, which would make the vertebrae rotate to the right, right? Like spring test, oh, this is stiff. There's a little positional fault here. Let's do a P to A this way or a unilateral P to A with this way to improve whatever is, is missing. You can forget about all that. You can start with, let's just say, general P to A. You know, nice pisiform contact and have your shoulders over your hands. You know, I don't want to see any of this. I don't want to see any shrugging. I don't want to see anyone on their tiptoes. So you can start off doing that. But if we can't be specific, why are you just staying on one, one side, right? Like, why not alternate? You can just alternate just generally up and down the spine. Think about if all we're trying to do is provide novel stimulus, once you vary that amount of stimulus as much as you can. If we are not worried about which direction the facet's going, you know, we can do P to A and inferior. I can do P to A and superior. We can alternate left and right, or why even stay around within one level? Why not do unilateral P to A's up and down the spine? And patients, trust me, find this way more comfortable. It's, it's a way to kind of make joint mobilization feel more like a massage. Because while there are people who absolutely want you to take and mash the tender point, the trigger point, or the stiff joint as much as possible, most people will appreciate you actually staying away from the super tender point and not oscillating on it until the nervous system kind of relaxes.